Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, we need to clean up the cabin cold frame and get ready for the winter season. Well, happy Labor Day to everybody. I hope your Labor Day weekend was a fantastic one. Boy, the weather here in Minnesota has been absolutely stunning. And we have another complete week uh, into the low 80s all week long. The trees are loving life. So we'll hopefully get some updates later on in the show today. But our first line of business is tackling part of the cabin cold frame. So inside, we're gonna get everything out, sweep it up, and we're gonna go ahead and give it a nice new layer of stain. A house project has given me some leftover stain, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that's a little more protected for a few more years to come. We gotta move some of the Minnesota Bonsai Society workshop trees, all the tiger barks, up for, uh, by the garage because within a couple of weeks, less than two weeks away, our final MBS workshop of the year is ready to uh, take place. So let's get those up by the garage, make more room so it's easier to move around this place and work on the cabin. We'll do that while the fish are swimming and the weather here just can't get any nicer. Let's get to work. Okay, that does it for the workshop trees. So now I have to find a place for the other trees. However, I'm not gonna be staining the deck portion of the cabin cold frame, just the walls and the floor in there. So I can't, I could leave some stuff out here and I think I will. It is a bit of a mess though. So let's give it a good fall cleaning and take it all off, sweep it up, and then we'll put them back in a nice, nice design. Almost everything is out of the cabin cold frame. This shelf will just stay put here. We'll go ahead and take the top part off. And these are bolted in, so we'll uh, get our small broom sweeper cleaner thing, and we're gonna, or a rag, and we're gonna get rid of some of the cobwebs, a lot of spiders crawling around as we do in the sweeping here. And then we're gonna get rid of this shelf right in here. It's tacked in with one bolt to the wall, so we'll get that out of here. Um, got all the cables for the power. So we're just gonna go ahead and sweep this clean and we're gonna wipe it clean with a towel and then we're gonna go ahead and stain this whole inside part. So I will just do um, from the uh, bottom of the roof here, the top of the wall down. We'll get the whole walls first and then I'll come in here and, and do one more layer on the ground because that's where most of the water is gonna uh, sit. Uh, and it's getting a little bit, uh, a little bit rough looking in here. We got some thin parts of walls breaking down and um, you know it wasn't made with uh, the optimal optimal material, um, but uh, it's worked out really really well, and it's got several years of life in it, I imagine. Um, so we're going to clean this out, and we'll get it stained. The cabin cold frame is all prepared to do a little staining. Now again, this is inside the cabin cold frame. I'm the only one that sees the inside of this cabin cold frame, and though you know there's a part of me that believes in doing really good quality work with everything I do. This is kind of one of those jobs where you're just going to slap it on. We're not going to wipe any stain away. We're just going to take the big brush that I got and make the job super nice and easy for me. And we're going to just slap it on so we can get a good coat of protection in here. 
and so there's just a little less chance for water to uh, seep into the wood and stay wet for a long periods of time and increase those chances for mold to develop in here. So I got the gloves on because I don't make a mess. I've changed shirts if you haven't noticed into my staining shirt and uh, we got a good mix in here and we are ready to stain the inside of the cabin cold frame. So let's uh, let's see how this is going to go on. Nice big brush, nice big stain brush. Probably going to make a mess, probably going to drip around a lot, but again, it's the cabin cold frame. Okay, there we have the base, the main uh, part of the cabin from the top of the wall to the bottom of the wall. We're going to let the bottom floor, there's a couple of pieces that are a little bit wet yet from watering yesterday. So we'll let that all dry out today and uh, tomorrow, the next couple of days, and I'll get this stained uh, real quickly uh, one afternoon or evening this week as the temperatures look in, it'll be in the low 80s. So we've got this. Uh, Nice coat of stain on here to give it one more layer of protection. I just slapped it on, didn't wipe anything off, just to keep it nice and thick, and the water will just beat up and uh, go right off of that and not penetrate. So gives it a nice little uh, even uh, look. Looks nice and a nice little darker shade here. My question is whether or not I do the top. Now, of course, there's still going to be humidity here in the winter, but we're not going to have any water spraying up there. Um, I could do that. I'm not going to do it right now. I'll think about it and uh, maybe I'll uh, do that on a different weekend if I feel so inclined. But the cabin is clean now, nothing's in here, things are just going to dry and we can move on to the next project. Though I have a good month before I really have to get any of the fish out of this pond, I keep all the fish in the lower pond for the winter months. They're sitting right here, the net's right here, and sometimes they'll go hide underneath the deck. So this is my chance to get at least one right now and get this fish into the lower pond. So let's see if we can go ahead and scoop this without scaring them too much. They already know something's up. A double catch would be fantastic. There we go, let's get him into the lower pond. Now the other two, sensing something's wrong, sometimes will hide. But we're going to go ahead and see if we can get all of them today, right now. Look at that, a double catch. We got both of them. So the three goldfish have their new home in the lower pond, which did phenomenally well with the lily pads this year. And I've got a couple more blooms. We might get some September blooms of the lily pads, which is super fun. So this one, when it freezes, we'll have a little gas. Uh, exchange air pocket here with a little heater and I'll have a bubbler down here. So all the fish are in here so that pond I don't have to circulate up there anymore and actually when I circulate up there that's what creates some of the leak of my pond so now they can just go ahead and stay comfortable in here with a little crick over here to your right and the fish will be in a good spot. So another job I only had to do two net jobs because we got two in one. I was pretty lucky this year. They are getting big though it's harder for them to hide. All right let's see what's next with the bonsai trees. Here is my parrot's beak, also known as the melina, or I should say melina, also known as the parrot's beak. We'll give it a circle around here. It's leaning a little bit to the left. And uh, in the last couple of weeks, this melina and the other one I have from the workshop from last year uh, just took off. I, I trimmed it recently and it's just shooting up like crazy. So the other one I'm going to leave alone because we're going to bring that to the workshop and see if someone wants to pick up that tree and work on that one for a future tree for theirs. So this one has a nice split right here. It's kind of an, a, a Y tree, a big split with two big branches that are not gonna move anymore. 
these melinas are very, very rigid when they get thick. So you want to make sure you're trimming the melinas early on, putting wire on early before uh, they get too rigid. Um, certainly not going to move anything that's an inch thick like this trunk here. But we have a tree that's moving uh, from uh, uh, the right to the left. It's kind of leaning to the left there. And we just got all this growth. We're just going to bring it down and see if there's any branches in here that I just don't think I'm going to want. And then just going to bring it down into size. So just a little prune for today. It'll probably sit on the bench now through the month of September unless we get a really big cold spell. Uh, this tree will like to have a little bit more warmth. And as we get into the 40s at night, uh, I don't want to run the risk of stressing this guy out. But this has all kinds of new little tiny buds shooting out everywhere. And so it's growing really, really good. Um, it is in an energy positive, kind of like um, a maple tree when you get that first flush and we trim it back and you get a second flush, we trim it back. This is uh, kind of its second flush. I'm gonna trim it back. We'll get a little bit more growth with this beautiful week or two we're gonna have in September. The forecast for the next 14 days is phenomenal. So we'll get a, probably a continued push out here before we have to put it into the plant room and get that artificial light on there. So um, there's nice ramification in some of these branches. So right here we split into two really nicely here, but oftentimes they have big runners like this. Here's another split in two right there and another split in two right here. So my pruning from last time I think really did really good work in going from one to two, which is why we prune, right? There's a nice bifurcation right there. There's a nice bifurcation right here where it went into two. So I don't have to really even touch that branch unless I just cut off the tip. But then this one took off and didn't split. This one up here took off and didn't split. Look at this one right here, almost another foot of growth since I cut this back. So we'll take a peek into the tree here and see what we got going on. Now this one is coming right out at us. So even though it splits real nice, it's kind of in our face. But let's just cut it down shorter for right now and just kind of see what this will look like in the end. And this one split, we'll just cut that one down to the leaves. We'll cut that one down to the, we got, we got three or four pairs of leaves here, almost six. We could cut this one down a little bit shorter here in here and then see what happens. And that's coming out towards us too, so that might not stick around long term. Now this one looks like it has a cut point back here. Here's the last cut point right here. Hard for you to see on camera. Cut that little nub off and we're going to bring this way shorter here because this took off but this one didn't. So we'll see if we get two growths out of there. And here's that split that happened naturally. We're just going to leave that one alone. This one's going straight up into the tree though so we will cut this one down a little bit more and have a leaf that's growing this way. So we, we, we tied it up. We almost have a little pad in this tree right here now. And this one is still, I think, too much in our way. Let's just cut that down lower. We can probably get a little bifurcation down there. We'll get this one down lower. We'll get this one down lower. So cutting this down to size is the easy part. We'll go in there and see if we can get rid of any uh, branches we just don't want here in a little bit. But we have lots of growth down low. So we're just cutting this down to bring it back into size. And this is one of those nice, easy prunes, kind of like a maple tree, where you're just trimming it and making it look like a tree again. And that's just a quick, that was almost like a uh, big old uh, hedge prune right there because we went so fast. But now we're going to go back and we're going to take a peek at this and see if there's any branches and big leaves that are just growing in the wrong direction and we can cut off. So at the apex of the tree right here, we have one, two, three branches growing from this one spot. And that was a big chop on the inside in here. So right in here where my scissors is, this was a big chop a while back. But now there's three growing here. And so because this is the proposed front of the tree, I should probably get rid of this one that's coming out at us. And I think I will do that. So that opens up that trunk right there, and now we've got our apex right here. And we'll go ahead again and shorten that one here. This one goes back. This one's growing out of a branch way in there in a really weird angle. We're just going to cut that one right off. And now that, now that I see it, you see how these two are going to compete against each other? Let's just cut this one off here because it's kind of a bar branch in the back anyway. And this is our apex. We want that to grow up really nice and pretty. This one's coming at us at the camera. So we're going to cut that off and the old stump with it. 
and keep this one right here as the new primary. This one's growing way from back here. Look at that. Way, way underneath here. It's trying to grow way tall. We're just going to cut that one out from back. There we go. Look at that. So now that cleans up that, that, that branch that was trying to come up right in there. So this one here is crossing over. It's connected to this one, so I cut it off right there. So now we can see our trunk and we can see the secondary trunk. We will cut this off right here because it's leaning towards us. And we'll let it grow up more as that secondary trunk here where it splits right to here. So we've got the first split down here, the next split right here, but this trunk is way thicker than this one. So if this catches up, that would be really nice. Behind all that growth, there's this branch growing straight up. We're just going to cut that off and let that branch take off. This back branch here continue to grow up this way. Now this one's growing from down below. I, like, I don't mind that split, but it's real getting chunky at the end here. I don't know if I'm going to keep both of those. Those are competing in a pretty tough way. I think this one might be worth cutting off, but I like how it's growing this way. This one's down lower. Of course, if it was down here, it might be better someday. It is in the back of the tree right now, and I do like how it fills this space right here. So here's one of those decisions where why cut this one off if it fills in some, some space? Maybe we do cut this one off instead, so I think I will. And i got to clean that up a little bit. And this one is back budding ferociously. So where I just cut there, there were five or six or seven branches trying to grow in there. So we'll let the tip continue to do its thing. We let this one grow to fill up some back space back here to fill out the, the dynamic of the tree. This is going straight up. This one's growing back into the tree. We're just going to cut that one out now. It's time to cut that one off of this tree. There we go. Yeah. We might have kept it to see which way it would grow. It's not growing in a good way. We're going to cut this bottom one off here and promote the upgrowth. See, we have this tree growing, this branch over here growing too, which fills back this part of the tree down here. So we'll leave that for now too. So now we have this side. It's all kind of flat right in here. I don't know what's going on. There's a branch right in there that's trying to grow. We have these two that are growing straight up and down. I don't want that one there. So we have this front branch and then the branch back here, and these are bar branches actually. They're grown from the same spot. But if I take this one away, it exposes this entire front, which might be okay. We see that, uh, we see that uh, trunk structure. I'm going to leave it for right now though. I want it to grow taller first. Let's see what we're going to do with it. Um, prune from last time. We're going to get this one growing back in maybe. Let's shorten this guy up. So here was our last stub right there. That's getting a little bit shorter now. I'll cut that off a little bit tighter. And we have an inside branch right here. So we have this, we have this, and this. It's a nice pad, but this is blocking the inside path in here. So let's find out where it starts and cut that off. It opens up a little bit more in here, and you can see this back branch over here. So we'll cut that to an outward facing branch. We're gonna cut this one way back. This one to an outward facing branch. Make that a little bit shorter. Promote, promote the growth going up and out. And there, I don't mind leaving the tree right around there. Now there's always all these little things that we can do to clean up our tree. We've got a couple of little branches here. We have a couple of uh, pieces of foliage growing straight down at the bottom of this tree. We cut some of these off or pull some of them off. Then we can see kind of the pad forming a little bit and leaves wanting to grow up into the sky tall. You can see I got my fertilizer pellets on here, starting to break down. With all this warm weather, super great to have uh, the warm weather, the new fertilizer on this tree. It's going to do some really good growing, I think, before we bring it inside. So again, some of these bigger, older branch uh, leaves, rather, and they're growing down. So we can go ahead and snip those off. Branches that are growing down, I just cleaned up the bottom of that. Now look at this side. We can get rid of some of these. 
promote more of the growth. There we go. We got most of those that were hanging down. Clean up the bottom there. There's a couple back here, not quite as, as crucial. It's in the back of the tree. But of course, the same principle. If they're angling down, growing down, we don't want that long term. So I kind of cleaned up the bottom a little bit right there. And we got a couple of just really big leaves that were maybe trying to take over. Cleaning up some of that also promotes more energy to the other parts of the tree. A couple of low hanging and inside branches in there. So again, trying to prune our trees to balance. Get some balance in here. We got all these thick branches in here trying to become trees. We don't want all of them. In some cases, these are just growing at a really weird angle. Oh, we've got a big spider there that was trying to say hello, but I wasn't paying much attention to him. So we cleaned up some of those big, thick, heavy branches and there, leaves in there, that foliage there, letting some more light in here. See if we can get some more, even more back budding in some adventitious spots for down the road. And then with this particular tree, Again, this melina, also known as the parrot's beak, it grows so many leaves in one spot, you don't want to have any bulging down the road, so you want to pick the uh, direction of which way this is going to grow and then prune off some of these, these other leaves that we just know we're not going to use. And then it thins it out too and gives the light a chance to penetrate. out that area. Well, let's see if that one does anything. So the only other thing I'll do before we call this one quits is I've got this thick section back here, which these two are competing. This branch is growing in the inside, which goes into this branch. And so that's just going to go to leave more room for this branch. Now this branch though is kind of shading out this down here, but we probably want this to come more out and up and not crisscrossing this way. So I'm actually going to cut it shorter for one. Then I'm going to cut this one shorter at the middle. And let this one grow out this one and this one grow out this way to leave light for here. The light will kind of come through, penetrate there and here and here. And then we'll see what happens in the next growth cycle. This one back here is just a little long. We'll cut that one out right there. Okay. I think we're going to call it right there. So there's the Molina, also known as the Parrot's Beak. Let's go ahead and spin this one around one more time for you. Put it in the center of the pot there, or center of the spinner table. And we got a nice leaning tree with a couple of really nice main trunk lines. And uh, the growth is really strong right now. And so I think we'll get another several weeks of growth before we put it down in the plant room. But there we have the Molina, also known as the Parrot's Beak. So here we have the Japanese maple that we tried the uh, thread grafting on. And you'll notice a dangly branch here. Now I just clipped that off this morning, but I had one branch that was still hopeful here with a bud. And that was my last update right here. But this morning when I came to look at the tree, this was here and this was gone. I'm assuming it was a tennis ball or a critter. One of the two. The kids have been playing more wiffle ball and sometimes hitting a tennis ball. 
and when they whiff on the big fast pitches, it could have hit that branch easily and knocked it off. Not a big deal. This branch wasn't probably going to take anyway, so then I just went ahead and did that. So we're going to do some cleanup on this tree, getting it ready for the cabin cold frame. This one looks like it was bruised a little bit too. So we're going to cut that nice and flush because we have this really nice angling branch up here. And here's our new growth right here. We'll leave that one alone, but we're going to go ahead. We're going to cut off the center of that one. The center of that one and that one right there. Just leave that. We can leave this on for some energy growth. And we're going to cut that off and just leave that up there. And we're going to cut that one off. We're going to trim that. We're going to trim that. And then up here, we're going to trim that height off. And we're going to trim it off back here. So, short and sweet, next year the goal is to get this chopped now. Our, our uh, approach crafts didn't work. I can't air layer up here because it's, it just wasn't, uh, it's not uh, conducive enough for me to try to air layer there. And this right here, I could air layer, but this has this real flat, we chopped off one side already, big scar, big swell. I, I, air layering for here just really wasn't worth it for me so I decided against the air layer so next spring we're gonna let the new growth shoot out and after the first growth hardens off we're gonna go ahead and cut this off right here we could also hard chop this uh, in the winter time uh, before the push of growth even starts so I'll decide what I want to do but push comes to shove we're gonna end up chopping this thing down to here by these two branches so this is a really lovely branch right here the way it's growing this one has some really fun curves to it so that's nice but then it gets straight for a long time and <clears throat> there's a little bud growing right by my finger here so i know this is uh, pushing a lot of energy we'll get more back budding on here so that'll that'll hopefully uh, change next fall and we'll see what happens and we'll cut that way down but this could become the new the new leader of this tree for sure and this could be a primary branch right here there's even a little bud that tried to grow right there and it just got damaged so um, this this is a cut an old cut that's almost completely healed over right here by my finger so so it's a little beat up the uh, grafts didn't take but we just have a little foliage left we've got another month of this glorious weather here in minnesota we might get a few buds pushing but as long as there's green on the tree here and the roots are all doing their thing uh, we're going to set this up for a chop for next year. So there is the Japanese maple. We just cleaned it up and now it's super skinny and will totally fit into the cabin cold frame run it when it's ready to go inside. The last update for today is a Korean fir. Now this is one of the many trees that I'm experimenting with out at Bonsai Acres. We'll have an update on Bonsai Acres here in the coming uh, weeks or month or so as well as we're going to head out there and do one final mowing of the grass. And we have some of these in the ground, but I had a couple of these that were in that five year range that I had the chance to get from my friend Neil and put into a bonsai pot to do some experimenting right in a pot versus in the ground. So we have a decent swell of an abari down here, but a lot of these trees have these roots that are real tight together and grow straight down. So we have to kind of pull them apart and hope for more growth. Uh, we got a little bit of uh, uh, roots here that are peeling out a little bit. So I'm just kind of making sure um, this one right here is probably going to come off because it's coming directly across and it's just a weird pattern. This one's growing up and down. We might trim that, but we're not doing that today. We'll do that at, at the next repot. But we have some death on the tree. We have some wire on the tree. I don't know that this uh, bottom branch is going to make it, so this one might be coming off. Um, I think it's going to be coming off. Um, there's a little bit of growth right there. That one's just a goner. So we don't have much uh, green left on this one, so it's probably not going to uh, be a viable branch. So it becomes up here now. And this is where some of the growth happened this year, right here in this midsection. So I have a lot of little buds that are formed on these branches, and there's a whole bunch in here. So here's some back budding right here and here, and there's some buds in there. So we're just gonna leave all that alone, but I wanted to get rid of this top a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and take off this wire where this was 
wrapped around. I'm gonna go ahead and clip that off. But first, let's take this tip off right here. There we go. And now we have this as the tip of that tree. So we've got bud here, bud here, two buds there, a couple buds there. There's buds on the inside too, some viable buds that are back a little bit. So we'll just leave that and hope for the best on, on uh, up at the top there and see what happens. We might even get some more back budding like right in here. So this branch right here is a little thick and it does have some of the back budding. So I don't want to get it too much shorter. We will cut that off. And this we can maybe wire, maybe push this wire and bend it over that way more. So we do have some wire on this, no wire on this branch here, but that could be pulled over this way with some wire, which we can do a little bit later on in the fall here. So I just wanted to show you the tree. This is the Korean fir. The Korean fir has kind of a white underside. So if you twist these branches too much, you get some of the white underside showing and then it doesn't photosynthesize as well. So you have to make sure that the uh, darker green tops stay on top when you wire the Korean fir. Um, but yeah, we have a nice strong branch right down here that's growing out. This is all a back bud this year. I think that's all good growth right here in the last year or maybe two and there's another side branch right here that started and there's this branch right here now we don't i'm not going to cut that side one here in case we cut this off here and leave that one but these two are vertical of each other but this is the strong branch right now and as you can see i have this dead branch right here so that again is going to be an unwire we cut that off but the left side did survive real nice so that is the Korean fir. I just wanted to get the tip off and we're going to get rid of the wire here and cut that off, take off this wire and just call it a day. So I'm going to go get my wire cutter uh, in case I need to go we'll have to cut that one up right there. You know what? No, we can take that all the way off. Let's just take that off. It is starting to cut in a little bit and it's not supporting any bend right now because it was just supporting the tip. So we can actually take this one all the way off. The one thing about the Korean fir for sure, if you've never worked with this particular fir, this is a very soft, pliable tree. So if the bend doesn't take in year one, you're gonna be doing year two, year three, <laughs> or leaving the wire on for a lot longer. Because I just took that wire off and that branch that it was holding right there just already sprung back into shake if we want that back over here someday. A little bit bigger branch maybe when it's bigger and we'll keep, we'll keep wire. Maybe this fall we'll put on some new wire there. And then this is the dead branch. This could become a gin. So we'll, uh, we'll do that today. We'll make this into a gin, like this big old branch just didn't survive for whatever reason. And then again, this is a, this is a tree that we have out at the farm, Bonsai Acres, in the ground. I'm growing a little bit slower than I anticipated. Boy, the white pines and the red pines grow like weeds, and the other ones are just growing a little bit. They're a little bit slower. The Korean is a little bit slower of a grower. And I knew that growing, going in. Uh, my, my son was telling me that. But they're, they're such a neat tree. They're a little bit more compact of a tree. And uh, but so they, they can be a real nice thick tree to work with. You can see now this one's dead too. I oh, know this one has some growth. But we're going to go ahead and just take this wire off. We're going to reassess our wiring for the fall here since we're working on the tree right now. And here comes that wire. Yeah. So we're gonna make this into a gin right here. Uh, so we'll cut that off. I think that one's a goner too. We're gonna, we're gonna gin that one too maybe. We'll keep a gin now. We can always cut the gin off later. All right. I think these are fine. They're not eating into the tree too much. We'll leave that wire on for now. So we'll make some gins and call it a day. So we're going to carve away this live tissue. So we 
go ahead and squeeze the branch. A lot of water flowing through here still. And we're squeezing the bark and then it'll just peel right off. I'm just gonna make sure we have a cut on the back side here so we don't create any tears into the bark. And then for whatever reason, this branch didn't make it. And so it's gonna show this death and age. I think it's a little long. It's not breaking on me because it's so fresh. There we go. You get that more natural, like something broke it off. There we go, it's a little more natural. And this one's super small. But we can go ahead and gin that one too. And if these branches grow up and get older, we have a little bit of gin right here. Now we could wire this gin and make it go down and around. We could wire this one too, and then it'll, you know, harden off in that position because it's gonna die or it's dead soon. I mean it was green until I took that off. Um, <clears throat> but we're just gonna leave it for right now. I don't know if that, that'll stay on there. So there we go, um, a Korean fir. Again, a new species, uh, not uh, used in bonsai a lot that I know of, but uh, I do love the, the, the Korean firs that I've seen. Um, I do love it with a little bit of movement. The bark is kind of fun. Um, and and uh, we're just doing some experimenting with bonsai acres. So we got the wire off of the parts that don't matter. We tripped off the tim and, uh, tip and made this more the leader, or this one could become leader. Uh, we could even cut it down here and make this the leader someday, you know, and make this curve a little bit more and this could become up here. Um, not important now, we have back buds on here so hopefully with this fertilizer on here we'll get a lot of growth for the, for the late fall and then ready to push out some growth in the spring. Korean fir. I think that'll do it for this Labor Day. So we've got trees on the grass, we've got shelves all over the yard, drying cabin cold frame. We'll let that dry, put the windows back on this uh, late afternoon. We'll get some of the trees back on the uh, porch here for the evening and everything and uh, we'll just make sure that's good and dry um, and then I've got to do the floor before the end of the day as well so we'll see if it's dry enough if not I'll wait for a day or two and get that floor done because that's gonna get the bulk of the moisture right I want to make sure that's protected with uh, the stain we're gonna put on there so we got a couple of trees worked on we got that Japanese maple just all trimmed up and ready to go into the cabin cold frame Unfortunately, none of those uh, thread grass work, but oh well, we keep trying, and next year we'll work on that chop. I uh, showed you that Korean fir. Uh, the Korean fir is, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, those do out at the farm and in the pots here. So more updates on the farm coming up as well. And um, yeah, this was uh, a nice little Labor Day work session. Got a few things done and uh, ready to uh, do some other work around the house before the big first day of school. So hey, let's call it a show there and we got lots of updates to come and getting ready for fall and winter here. So um, feeling better by the way. The update on the COVID is it's uh, two weeks plus since uh, first uh, tested positive. I have tested ne negative, but I still have a little bit of that nasal sound. And, you know, there's still some stuff just clinging on just a little bit, but uh, feeling super good and ready to make some new videos in the coming weeks after the school year calms down. So if you don't see me for a week or two, uh, he heavy into the new school year, getting kids all situated. In the meantime, hey, take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and we'll catch you on the next one for sure.